In today's video, I'm revisiting an old project in which I make a media basket for the Fluval Evo 13.5. I actually finished this project about five months ago and never actually made a video about it. So we can get a five month review on how the media basket has been working for this tank. So stay tuned to check out the progress. And if you stay till the end, I have a secret project that I've been working on for a while and I'd like to give you a sneak peek. Welcome back to IC Live. My name is Mark. Let's get started. So this project it was actually finished about five months ago, although it started right after I got the Fluval Evo 13.5, which you can see in some of my previous videos like the tank crash, the stand build, and the 3D printed rockwork aquascape. Now I was supposed to create this video quite a long time ago, although I had to move abruptly and ultimately I created a tear down and put back up video and haven't gotten around to actually revisiting this media basket. So looking back to the past, this project actually started with a request on nanoreef.com in which somebody asked me to create a media basket for the Fluval Evo 13.5. Now this was actually before I owned one, so I created a pretty terrible media basket for it because I didn't really have the dimensions and I didn't understand the tank all that well. I wasn't really making videos much at the time so I only had a little bit of video footage of the media basket and some of the ceramic media that I was going to put into the basket which you can see right here. But once I finally got my hands on the Fluval, I then realized this thing needs something serious and much better than what I previously created. So I got to work. I started by creating the 3D model of the tank, which is what I also used for the stand. So I already had all that. And then uh, I had to make the rear of the tank, the filtration section, a little more detailed. And this is where I finally got into the design of the media basket. Now you will see soon, this actually took me like four different attempts and it's mainly because I was just not keeping it simple. I was trying to make the media baskets too complex and uh, you will see that right here. So I'm gonna get started with the first design and we are gonna fly through these because ultimately I have a lot of design footage in this video. So buckle up, here we go. hours later it probably was 72 hours because I do not remember how long this thing took to print but I do know it was a long time because it has a lot of plastic 
The print turned out what we'll just say is usable. The design and the patterns has a lot of overhangs, which I did not account for. So as you can see, there's a lot of blobbing. After cleaning it up, turned out pretty good and it's most likely gonna be workable. If you can see, here's the blobbing and the overhangs. Not the prettiest print, but it's gonna go in the back of a tank and it's going to get really nasty. The print was a little bit brittle, so before it goes into the tank, I'm gonna give it an acetone smoothing. And it actually was gonna to be totally functional, but something happened to it before I got there, which you'll see here in a second. Here is my acetone smoothing container. So I put a little bit of acetone in the bottom with the paper towels, and then I put the model on the grate structure. This thing was actually made for brewing beer in the past, but I haven't done that in a while, so I've repurposed it for this. I don't always smooth things with acetone, but when they're a little brittle and I want them to be more durable, I do do that because it smooths the layer lines together and makes the model much more solid. A few moments later. This is my dog, Ziva. She can be a bit of a moron sometimes, and uh, so can I. Ultimately, after I finished the acetone smoothing, I took the model and put it outside so it could dry in the sun and harden up. And this little dum-dum right here decided to tear the model up. So there goes my 72-hour print and the possibility of finishing this project on the first design. This is the aftermath of the Wrath of Ziva, and this thing is no longer usable. As you can see, the smoothing went really well. This thing's pretty solid now, but not solid enough to not get chewed up by German Shepherd teeth. I am not going to reprint this model because it took too long and used way too much plastic. I'm actually going to redesign the media basket to use a lot less plastic and be much easier to print without supports. So here we go again. With the main design complete, let's take a look at this thing. So water comes in, the overflow goes down. And if you notice, I covered up the holes in the baffles that let the water go through. So the water has to go down the media basket, under the bottom, then through the baffle holes, which are right here. And then on this second chamber, it has to go up and over. So then it'll then flow down into whatever you put into the second basket. For anybody who has a more standard overflow, this is very generic as in water goes on the bottom, goes down and up and then down and then up and over one last time into the pump chamber. This thing is all ready to print, but to make it easier, I ended up cutting it in half and it's going to take 18 hours and 44 minutes. The next morning. The prints turned out usable. They do have some flaws, but they use so much less plastic. So now it's time to clean them up and glue them together.
first chamber media basket is all done and it looks once again workable it's pretty rough got a lot of stringing i printed this in petg which i'm not all that successful with I also ended up making a media basket for the second chamber, which has a slightly different design and uh, works to kind of push the water over the top. So here is me putting the two pieces together just like the media basket for the first chamber. Although this looked like it only took two tries with this first one getting chewed up by my dog, that is actually not the case. I just didn't have footage of some of the other ones, but I did have the aftermath. So here's a few of the terrible pieces. This was a fail. I'm trying to print that second design, the one that you just saw in clear. I tried to print that in ABS, that failed. Then I tried to print it in PETG, this orange one, and that failed. Not exactly sure why. And then I tried to print it in, then I printed it in clear. And that one failed as well so if you notice you got some major issues up here the PETG just was not working well for me so I adjusted the parameters and that's when I also decided to cut the model into two pieces but I also have this piece which turned out like it looked worked really well uh, this one actually oh there we go yep that was trying to print it in ABS too long too skinny so this was nearly a week of print failures until I finally got these two right here to work for me and they are very flawed themselves. So it was not the easiest prints. I ended up leaving these in salt water for about a week just to make sure that if they had any issues with leaching anything that that got out and they got acclimated to the salt water. This is probably not mandatory, but there is things like the goo sticks that adhere the prints to the bed and that can leave a residue. So I just decided to do this as a precaution. All right, first thing to do here was to take out that water level height adjuster on the Fluval, see if this thing fits. So I go ahead and push it down and I'm encountering a little bit of an issue. For everybody that has a Fluval, you know that there's this little piece that goes down the center of the first chamber and I did account for it with a slit, although I noticed here that it was coming in contact by about a millimeter. So literally one millimeter, my, uh, my slit down there was one millimeter too small. So I do have to get this thing adjusted. I pull it out, I cut into that millimeter so it now will accommodate, and then I go ahead and try to set this thing back in the tank again. All right, it's a little snugger than I'd like it to be. So it goes down, it's a little bit of friction there, but it goes all the way in. It's exactly how it's supposed to fit. Excellent, I will call this one a win. And if you notice right here, I put this little top handle so I can pull it out really easy. All right, now I gotta go ahead and get some filter median in there. Probably gonna put some filter floss in the top and just some carbon in the bottom for now. Next up is the middle chamber. So this one's a little bit more complex, but ultimately I encounter the same issue. I was about a millimeter off in printing the diameter of that circular section at the bottom of the Fluval's second chamber. So to make this one fit, I have to pull it out. I have to completely rip off that bottom section that I created. Um, it ends up working, but it wasn't how it was intended. With the section removed, it slides right in, and ultimately, I'm gonna go ahead and call this a win. As I mentioned earlier, this happened quite some time ago. So in between this, I've taken the tank down and put it back up in a new house. Uh, the media baskets actually worked really well, although not necessarily good enough. So let's go ahead and fast forward five or six months to see how this thing's been working out. Many months later. Here is the tank just a few weeks ago. There's Bruce the shark and uh, the media baskets. They're working pretty decently. There's a little felt pad in the top there. It tends to get clogged up really quick, which will actually cause the height of the tank to rise. In the middle somewhere, I've got the, you'll see here in a second, I've got the carbon. Now it's not as easy to remove just quickly and then put back in the tank 
huge negative there. Um, I have to admit, I have not been cleaning it often, but I have been cleaning the filter pad, that little felt pad at the top. I've been cleaning that quite a bit, but ultimately this thing needs improvement. So I've got a few ideas and some things that I've been working on. So ultimately this media basket is gonna get replaced by the first of its kind, all-in-one roller mat filter designed specifically for the Fluval Evo 13.5. And here's a quick snippet of this future project. So I'm super excited for this. This is actually a future video. But rolling back, this video was about the media basket. So if you want to get your hands on the media basket, go ahead and shoot me a message, leave a comment, although I'm not making it available for sale because it's too big to print and it has some flaws. Plus, my suggestion would be to just wait for this roller mat because I can tell you right now it is already working so good. So that is a wrap to this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, do not forget to like and subscribe. You will get notified when I release the next video about the roller mat. That's all I've got for today. And I will see you live in the next video.